Hey everyone, it's Jeremy Steiner, and today we're going to create a dynamic, reusable decal in Substance Designer that we can use to decorate our environments in Unreal Engine 4. Substance Designer's toolset allows you to create any kind of image. While it's commonly used to create repeatable tiling patterns, which can be then applied directly to geometry or used in something like Substance Painter, materials created in Designer can be used in many different ways. In this case, we're going to use it to create a couple maps that we can then use to create a decal in Unreal Engine 4. A decal is kind of like a sticker, but instead of it being just a flat color image, we can include attributes like normal and roughness. Decals let us apply textures to scenes without having to worry about UVs or seam lines. It's an extremely useful tool, especially for environment artists. Let's take a look at how to build our own puddle generator and then apply it to a decal in Unreal Engine 4. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what we're gonna make today. So I'm in Unreal Engine 4, and if you've been following my sci-fi weapon series, you're gonna get a preview of the environment that I'm creating to end up testing out that sci-fi weapon. But right here, I've got a quick little scene, and we're looking at this nice stone tile floor, and you can see that we've got these puddles. And so these puddles are the decals that we're going to create today. And you can see that they have reflections, and they're just stamped upon this floor. And it's, uh, it's really cool. And so we're going to make those really quickly in Substance Designer. So let's switch over now. Okay, so we're in Substance Designer, and here's a preview of the graph that we're going to create. It's actually quite a simple graph. We're going to be merging a couple grunge maps together and use the opacity channel to create this material. I just have it on a simple round cylinder. You can see we've got some reflections, and we've got what looks like some puddles on the ground. So let's create this graph now. So I'm going to go to File, New Substance, I'm going to use the PBR Metallic Roughness template, and let's just call this Puddle Floor Decal. I'm going to keep the size mode to absolute and do 4K as my width and height, and then 16 bits per channel. Hit OK. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a blend node, which I can then pipe through to the outputs that we are going to eventually use to create maps. And this just makes it easy to divert the grayscale height information to those channels quickly and easily. So I'm gonna hit spacebar and bring in a blend. Then I'm gonna connect the blend to the normal conversion node here. And then I'm gonna remove this uniform color connected to the roughness output. And this comes with our template. So I'll just hit delete to remove that. Up next, I'm gonna click on my graph, hit spacebar, and I'm gonna bring in an invert grayscale. And so I'm going to connect this invert grayscale to the roughness output, and then I'm going to connect our blend here into that invert. So we've got this blend connected to our normal conversion node. It's also connected to this invert grayscale, which is then connected to the roughness. And now there's one more bit of setup that we have to do, and that is create an opacity output. So down here, I'm going to click on my graph, hit spacebar, type in output. And then what I can do is go over to the parameters here, and under the usage attributes, I'm going to add an item and choose opacity. And this tells Substance Designer that this output will be used for the opacity channel. And what we can do is go to the identifier here and change the name. I'm just going to type in opacity. I'm also going to change the label here, opacity with a capital O. And so now I can connect this blend node to this opacity output. So we've got our connections here to this blend. Now let's start adding some grunge maps. So I'm going to click on my graph, hit spacebar, type in grunge map. And we've got a bunch to choose from. I'm going to choose grunge map 04. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we've got a bunch of neat looking puddle round shapes here that have a nice crisp edge around these bright shapes. And so we can adjust this map a little more. If I go to, let me just bring this explorer down a little bit. If I go to the balance and contrast here, I can play with these values a little bit, and we can see how it affects the map. So I think I'm going to increase it so I can get much harsher shapes here. So 0.74 looks good. We can adjust the contrast. And I actually really like these subtle details here in the background. You can see we've got these nice circular wavy shapes. So maybe what I'll do is bring down the contrast quite a bit so I can expose those shapes. About 0.02. And now let's talk about this brush pattern option here. So if I increase this, you can see that it slowly fades in a border around our grunge map. 
And this makes it really useful for us to be able to tile these grunge maps. So if I bring this down, not all of these grunge maps that we're gonna create are gonna tile very easily. So I hit spacebar here in the 2D view. You can see how well this one tiles. This one actually tiles pretty well. But what we can do with this is if I bring up the brush pattern, say 0.19, you can see now we have this better defined area. And so if I start stamping this particular grunge map around, now that it has this soft border around it, I can rotate it, I can change its orientation when it's used as a decal and overlay these, and it brings a much more organic and seamless feel. So we've got our first grunge map. Let's create another one. So I'm gonna hit spacebar and bring in grunge map. Let's go with grunge map nine. And so you see, we've got these dark shapes here and I wanna utilize those a little bit. So actually what I wanna do is go to the invert setting here for this grunge map, change it from false to true. So now I'm targeting these large puddle shapes. And so I'm gonna take up the brush pattern here and just dial it in a little bit, 0.21. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start isolating these shapes and maybe grow them and simplify them a little bit. So what I can do is I can bring in a blur. So after clicking grunge map 09, spacebar, blur high quality grayscale. You can see this really simplifies and defines these bigger shapes. And then after the blur high quality grayscale, I'm gonna bring in a histogram scan. So this allows me to select those larger shapes with this position slider. And then I can adjust this contrast slider to tighten in our selection in the histogram. So I'm gonna bring up the position to something around 0.53. Let's adjust the contrast. That's good there. I'm, again, I'm just looking at these large organic puddle shapes that we're making. And so now let's blend these two maps together. So I'm gonna make some room, just move this over a little bit, bring in a new blend. I'm gonna bring the histogram scan into the foreground and then this original grunge map into the background. And after I double click the blend, I'm gonna change the blending mode to add. So we add these together. So we can choose to fade these in if we'd like to, but I think I'm just gonna keep the opacity at one. So now let's take a look at what it is we've created so far. So right now I have the rounded cylinder selected. You can go to scene and choose rounded cylinder. And what I wanna do now is drag this connection into the foreground of our final blend. So a couple of things happened here. You'll notice that we don't have any opacity yet. And that's because when we created our template and we added this output, the 3D view doesn't know to look for this opacity output yet. So what I can do is right click on the graph and choose view outputs in 3D view. And it takes all these outputs and now pipes it in to our 3D view. So you can see what we've done here. We've created sort of an organic puddle-like texture. Now to see this texture a little bit better, I'm gonna to go to the uniform color that's connected to the base color output. I'm gonna click on that, choose grayscale, and just drag this down to black or zero here. And now we can really see those reflections. There's one more map that I wanna blend in here. So let's select all of these before that last blend, move those over. And I'm gonna bring in grunge map 15. So let's go all the way down to the bottom here, 15. And I want this map because I wanna add an overall wet area in case someone's walked through the puddle. I'm really thinking about the surface that this decal is going to be applied to. So it's a stone floor, and that means there's gonna be a bunch of crevices that the water would seep into, and I wanna fill in some of these gaps. So what I can do is I can select this connection between our two blends, spacebar, blend, and this automatically puts the blend into the background of this new blend. I'm gonna set the blending mode to add, and then I'm gonna bring that grunge map 15 into the foreground. So you can see it really fills out our texture here. And if you want, you can again dial this opacity. I think I'm just gonna keep it, yeah, keep it at one. And that's all we need to do for our graph. We've just taken a bunch of grunge maps and we've used grunge map 09, blurred it, and then isolated those larger shapes with the histogram scan and blended that on top of our original one, then filled things in with Grunge Map 15. Now we just need to export our outputs into maps that we can import into Unreal Engine. So to export our maps, I'm gonna go to this wrench icon at the top of our graph, click that and choose Export Outputs. Make sure to choose a destination here by clicking on this three dots button 
So for the format, I'm going to choose Targa. Now that's just a personal preference. You can choose PNG and you do have a large assortment of possible formats. I'm just going to choose Targa. And now I want to talk a little bit about color space. So you see we have our opacity output that's added to the extra outputs that we can export here. And you can see that it says raw as our exported color space. And it's important to know which of these maps are going to be based on sRGB, like our base color, or raw, which is going to export the map so that it's just raw data and not have any color shift change like sRGB or any gamma change or meant to be interpreted by the engine differently. Basically, it's important to know that our normal roughness and opacity are all going to be raw. And that'll be important later on when we get into Unreal Engine. So now what's next is to click Export Outputs. Great. Close that. And now let's get into Unreal Engine 4. OK, we're in Unreal Engine. So now let's navigate to a place that I want to go where I want to add some more puddles. So I'm just going to navigate over here to this patch in my floor. And now let's add a new decal. So I'm currently in the select mode and I'm going to go to the search bar and I'm going to type in decal. What I can do now is drag this decal right over here to this patch of my floor. So this decal needs a material. So let's create one now. I'm going to right click in the content browser and choose material. I'm going to call this material M underscore puddle decal stone floor. I'm doing the M underscore because that's an Unreal Engine convention. So hit return. So now let's double click the material to edit it. This brings up our material editor. So we've got our material, but now we need to import our maps. So what I can do, I'll minimize this for now. So here are our exported maps and they're all in our target files. Now I know I exported all of those maps, including the ambient occlusion and base color and metallic, and we don't really need those. So really all I'm focusing on is the normal, the roughness, and the opacity. So if we just select those and drag them into the content browser here, we can easily import them into Unreal Engine. And so there's a couple things that we need to check. If we double click, let's say the normal map, you need to make sure that this sRGB setting here is turned off. Remember what we talked about earlier with the raw versus sRGB color space? Sometimes when you import some maps into Unreal Engine, it's going to have sRGB checked, and that means it's going to interpret those maps differently than it would as raw data. So this one's OK. I'm going to close that. Let's double check the opacity. Good. sRGB is off. And the roughness. Great. So I'm double clicking on my material, and let me minimize this window just a little bit for now. To import these maps into our material, I'm going to left click on normal, hold shift and click on the last one to select all of them. And then just left click and drag them into our material graph. And let me maximize this window. So now we have all of our maps in our material to reference. Before we can hook them up, we have to tell this material that it's going to be used as a decal in a special way. To do that, let's click on this node. This is our material. And let's go over to where it says material domain. We need to change this to deferred decal. And you can see that's going to make some adjustments to the inputs for our material. We also need to set the blend mode of our material to translucent so that the engine knows that there's going to be some opacity and translucency. Then we need to go to the decal blend mode and change it from translucent to debuffer translucent normal roughness because those are the three maps that we're going to be using. So now I can take the RGB pin from our normal node, put that into the normal. Next up, I'm just going to drag this RGB pin into the opacity. And then finally, I'm just right clicking to drag the graph to pan. Let's take the RGB into the roughness. I'd like to note that you can also choose the red, green, or blue value for the roughness or opacity. It really just needs a sort of zero to one interpolation of whether or not there's any information there, whether it's on or all the way to off, you can choose any of these channels. Just don't choose alpha or RGBA. So that's everything we need to hook up. I'm going to hit save in the top left here in our material and then close this window. So now our material is set up. Let's apply it to the decal. So I've got my decal selected here. And what I can do is under decal material, choose our new material M underscore puddle decal stone floor. 
apply that, and there we go. We now have our decal with our assigned new material with the maps that we created in Substance Designer. And you can see that the opacity and the roughness are all taking place in the engine. So now what I can do is I can hold the Alt key and make a duplicate of this and just drag this over here. Then I can change it to the rotation tool and just rotate this a little bit. I can sort of stamp these puddles across this floor. And that's what makes decal so powerful within Unreal Engine. We don't have to worry about the UVs or any seams or anything like that, and we can decorate our floor. All right, so we created a couple maps in Substance Designer by blending together a bunch of grunge textures and then generating the normal roughness and opacity data. We then applied those maps to a material in Unreal Engine and then used that to drive a decal. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. It lets me know that you're watching and that you'd like to see more tutorials like these. And if you'd like to see more videos, including the last couple of videos of my sci-fi weapon series, hit subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. I'm Jeremy Siner. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.